Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk about genetic regex. My name is Robin, this is Ahmed. We will be talking about evolving regular expression features for text classification with genetic programming. Hi, I am Ahmed. Uh, I'm a data scientist at ING, uh, Jose Bank Advanced Analytics. So at ING we have a text classification problem. Uh, in this problem we want to understand if a transaction name belongs to a company or a private individual. So for this we have a very basic model, it is basically a bag of words, so we have a, uh, some vocabulary features which are not working. Oh, okay, maybe I have to keep it close. And in this one we have some uh, very basic features like basically vocabulary holding, transportation, Mr. John. In that case, John most probably means it is a private individual. But it doesn't generalize so well because let's say if you have the example of John BV or John MV, uh, does it look like a private individual? Actually, it is, it is most probably a company. Therefore, in order to generalize better, we also have some uh, regex features. So in that case, we, we can also consider space without space, so anything that ends with uh, two letters and dots. Uh, then our question is, can we automate this process, or maybe can we find even better regular expressions than uh, handcrafted regex features. Then at that point Robin joined us uh, for his master thesis. So what have we actually made? Uh, we made essentially an end-to-end -end text classifier. Uh, we made a genetic algorithm that gives us regular expressions. Then we can uh, use these regular expressions to get matches on uh, pieces of text. We can transform these matches into features that can then be used in a classifier. So for example, uh, at the bottom we have a piece of text and we have two regular expressions given by the genetic algorithm. Then we see uh, that it matches two strings of digits and to transform it into features we simply say did you find a match or not. If you did, you get a one. If you didn't, you get a zero. So here we have a binary feature vector of two which we feed to a classifier, which will then give us a prediction, which is in this case 1. So what was this actually an example of? Uh, this was an example of spam detection. We took a public data set from Kaggle for SMS messages, uh, which have both legitimate and spam messages. Uh, and we assume that there is a difference between these messages, but we don't know uh, what this difference is. So we want the algorithm to automatically find patterns that help predict whether something is a spam message or a ham message. Um, so this is the overview of the algorithm. Uh, we start by providing text to the genetic programming algorithm, which will then work its magic for a while and uh, give us regular expressions. We then use the regular expressions to match on text, get match features, which we can then use to train a classifier and finally use the classifier to make predictions. So internally the GP algorithm kind of follows the same steps to determine what is actually a good regex. So it proposes a regex, then uh, gets the features on text, trains a classifier and then evaluates the classifier to determine a score which indicates how well this regular expression works. Um, so this actually requires you to split the data set multiple times because you need both training data for the classifier but then you also need to evaluate the classifier so you have a second type of training data to uh, determine the validation score. So in essence uh, the classifier tries to optimize on its own training data but then the regular expressions are chosen based on the validation data so they try to optimize on that data set. And then, of course, uh, once you have your final regex, you want to evaluate that one, so you also have a test data set. So this is the overview of the genetic programming algorithm. Uh, this is how it actually generates regular expressions. Uh, genetic programming is a type of evolutionary algorithm, so it's kind of based on evolution in nature, uh, where you start with a population of individuals, and uh, offspring is generated from these individuals. So offspring is similar to, but still different from their parents. Uh, and then once you have the offspring, you do survivor selection. So you look at both the population and the offspring, and you keep only uh, the best. 
uh, this goes uh, on in a loop for a certain amount of generations. So the, the survivors become the population in the next generation. This goes on in a loop for a certain amount of generations. And then after that set amount of uh, generations, you return the best individual. Um, so an individual uh, gives us a set of regular expressions. Uh, an individual has a phenotype and a genotype, with the genotype determining the phenotype, and the phenotype actually being the regular expressions. The, the genes are given by a tree with um, a node in the tree representing a character in the regular expression. Uh, we uh, introduce a special split character, the, the two uh, pipes, that enable one uh, individual to um, describe multiple separate regexes in, in a single tree. And we use um, the quotation marks as leaf notes to indicate that uh, a part uh, a path down the tree uh, ends. So to uh, create offspring, we can do crossover or mutation. These are two uh, different methods. Uh, once, when you want to make a new individual, there's a random probability of choosing either crossover or mutation. <coughs> and we also implemented uh, multiple types of mutation that enable offspring to either keep or drop parts of the parent's tree. Um, then once an individual is generated, we also immediately evaluate it uh, using uh, um, training a classifier and evaluating it. And since you want uh, a good classification performance, the, the, fit, the higher the performance, the fitter we name the regex. So this is an example of crossover. We have two parents with their own trees. We um, select a random node in each of the trees as a crossover point. And what you basically do is swap the, the subtrees from those uh, crossover points to create two new individuals. So you can see we have a slash D and a slash W as crossover points. And in the child, the, the two nodes have been swapped. For mutation, it's uh, kind of similar but still different. You have only one parent and you uh, still select a random mutation point, but now you replace it with a random subtree. Um, and we actually, so like I said, we implemented multiple types. So in this example, we replace the at with the random subtree, but you can also see that the B node in the parent is lost. Uh, we also implemented a type called insertion where the B would actually become part of the random subtree. So it's more like you're inserting uh, a part into the regex. Um, yeah, here, here are the results of the algorithm. So as you see, there are some uh, algorithm finds two regular expressions uh, in, the, in the spam data. And for example, if you have websites in it, then uh, it is most probably spam. Then algorithm catches with www. And if there are codes or long digits like numbers, then algorithm catches that uh, with the regex you see digit, digit, and uh, word, digit, word. And this is, for example, especially this one is not very easy to catch with uh, uh, regular uh, character engrams or so something because you need to generalize the digits. And here you also see the performance. It's, it has 85% F1 score. Uh, then on top of it, um, so this was the base of the algorithm. Uh, then on top of it, uh, we also did some upgrades. So in a genetic algorithm, the complexity is usually a number of generations time population size because the main operation is fitness calculation. And since uh, main operation is fitness calculation, and in our case, uh, we train a model for, for every fitness calculation, then it is also linear to number of rows you have, because most of the classifiers uh, are almost linear to number of rows you have. Uh, then complexity becomes number of generations times population size times number of rows. And we can parallelize it. We can split the data to k islands, and we can also split the individuals to k islands, then in that case we get a quadratic speed improvement because we split both of them at the same time. You can think of this uh, splitting data as um, 
uh, as subsampling or um, then you and the individuals actually it is very uh, generic procedure in uh, genetic algorithms this island idea uh, and because it also gives you the diversity premature convergence is very common in genetic algorithms so uh, you may get a population which is very conservative like it it gets stuck in a local optimum then it can never uh, converge to a better uh, optimum from that and if you if we, since we migrate the individuals between the islands and we also shuffle the data after and generations we can avoid this problem and we also get like if you have 10 cores then you get 100 uh, times more uh, speed improvement uh, another thing we did on top of, of uh, on top of the current algorithm stacking because uh, you want your regex to learn uh, genetic regex to learn actually something different than you can learn with word grams or character grams or another model and you also don't want to waste your uh, time on basic features you don't want your regex to learn just the feature holding like as a word because you can get them much easier for this you you uh, we follow uh, simple stacking architecture so we create out of fault predictions so it is uh, very critical that they are out of fault and uh, within cross validation scheme here cross validation is actually not for validation purposes but for training and prediction purposes and then use, using this out of fault predictions as feature then we can create regular expressions which are different than you can generate from uh, word grams or some other features and other thing you can also have something like let's say LSTM with word embedding so in that case you don't want to retrain this cost algorithm over and over again therefore uh, you, you can go for uh, just uh, using out of fault predictions and here are the results so we we did it on top of uh, character three grams so for example previously we were catching uh, websites with uh, regular expressions now we don't need to because we have char character engrams so www is cached already and then we get some new regular expressions which are uh, really difficult to get with uh, other traditional methods so this one means uh, it is not uh, word boundary at the end so uh, when you get punctuations at the end it is likely that it is not spam but if there's no punctuation uh, then it is likely that it is spam and via this method we also improve the uh, f1 scores of 90 percent from 85 percent yeah thank you questions